Welcome back to the uh, All Things Kaz and JTAC channel. Rifle with you here, and you guys asked for it, and you are getting it. Someone out there said, hey, love the whiteboard series, but what is the Kaz stack? All right, and if you want to think of a stack of pancakes, it's exactly what it is, except uh, we're not stacking pancakes, we're stacking aircraft. And so this is definitely something I should have talked about a while back. But here it is, we're gonna do it today. So in the last whiteboard series, we've been doing IPs, we've been doing keyhole. I encourage you to go back to that because this is gonna really help you maximize your routing and safety of flight. And what are we looking at? We're looking at the V diagram. And so we're looking at this like keyhole is your top down bird's eye view. The V diagram is horizontally looking at it kind of like from the side. So let's uh, flesh out what we're looking at here. You got your ground level. And the reason the ground level is not at the bottom of the V diagram is because altitude blocks will be given in AMSL, so your main mean sea level. And so the, the ground level may very well be 2,000 feet, but you're using uh, AMSL. And so from a uh, ground level, uh, now you've also got something like the coordinating altitude. And what is that exactly? So a lot of the, your AH-64 guys out there in DCS world and, and the hips and all that kind of stuff, uh, in an area of operation, you could have something, for example, coordinating altitude was 3,000 feet. At that altitude, helicopters aren't going above that, planes aren't going below that. And some gun runs that I had done overseas, the A-10 were pulling those up before they reached 3,000 feet and give you an idea. So it's all about routing and safety of flight. And then as we go up into the V diagram, you're going to see these things that those are called blocks. Okay, and I want you to pay very close attention here to who's up here. All right, this stuff kind of makes sense. You've got your gunships, right? C-130 variants that are slow, fat, turning in a circle. And because of the nature of some of their organic weapons, you want them to be at the bottom of the stack. And then you're going to have your attack platforms above that, such as A-10, your F-series aircrafts, right? and fighters again going up a little bit higher and bombers way up high and so that doesn't always have to be like that but this is a nice uh template to follow but if you want to change them around there's nothing that stops you from doing that think of close air support as a blank canvas you are the artist you are the painter make it happen the V diagram is really going to help you flesh out the three-dimensional box as we have to be really good at 3D spatial abilities as the JTAC. The way that you're going to articulate the V diagram is when we're going to get the keyhole. If you haven't seen that video already, I encourage you to do that. But at Alpha 5, for example, then you can have, you're not going to put a gunship there because they need to be over the target unless you're going to do a, you know, Alpha 5 come in for the first strike. Uh, but if you've got your A-10s, let's call these guys A-10s, and they're blocking 14 to 16. Boom, that's it. That's all you have to say. The gray space is the distance between the blocks, which is very important. You cannot block someone 10 to 12,000 and then block the next person 12 to 14,000 because you have literally zero deconfliction there. They are sharing a, a foot of airspace, but the whole big sky theory has been proved wrong. Humans will mess it up. And so if you're looking here, 14 to 16, then this gray block here is 1,000 feet of budge factor. That is the amount of room you can actually mess up if the human messes up, right? Someone goes into the block here by mistake or goes up into it. The next one being 17 to 19 and a big old fat block for those bombers, 20 to 24,000. I want to be able to move on to see how we further flesh that out. So if you're familiar with the past videos, here's your keyhole template, the A, B, C, D, E. We're looking at this now top down, but the V diagram does not change. The V diagram is still the horizontal view. And if for whatever reason, tactically, I have decided my airplanes are going to be at alpha. I want to so show you a scenario of how I would show this realistically or make it happen. 10 to 12,000, I'm going to have a flight of hog. 6.3 and 6.4 will be out there. A thousand foot buffer. And then 13 to 15 are the dudes. So that's your strike eagles. 
And then 20 to 25, again, a big fat old block for Bone 1 1. It's a B 1 B bomber. On the next video, I'll be able to show how I would move these guys around. And I'll also introduce the TES or the target engagement zone. But this is how you can have your stack. And how do I say this? Any. I guess that's just it. I'm trying to think of a, a clever word, but that's, that is how you should build your stack. And before we get into the tactics of it in a, in a different video, think about how you have them at alpha five or alpha 10 and 15, and it takes five to 10 minutes. You give everyone your nine lines from this location. They visually acquire the targets. And then once you start having your guys go north to south, attacking their targets, then do they all go back? Do they go off to Bravo? And how do you do that with them staying in their airspace? Or do you have to move guys? It's going to be situation dependent, but that'll be an interesting video to do. And I'll see if I can't get in DCS world to do that. This picture, it's not to scale. If you move it over the area we've been bombing in the in the whiteboard videos. So I've just made the keyhole translucent with the V diagrams. This is actually to scale. This dotted line, that's five nautical miles. So you could take delta, for example, and that V stack would be over here. And uh, of course, like I just explained it, you could have your stack of aircraft. They're coming in west to east and start just demoing Yodaville as uh, as required. So there you have it. As the videos continue, I hope everyone's getting the picture in a linear fashion or sequential fashion that here's the routing and safety of flight. We are already getting the nine line fleshed out. And in this example, you could pass on three nine lines three different groups of targets to three different sets of airplanes. And even if that takes you 15 minutes to do over the radio, once you start executing this and we're getting really close to that piece, then you can start to see how you are the director of a symphony of quite simply an awesome, precise killing machine. I hope uh, everyone got a lot out of the uh, the V diagram there. I, I should have talked about this earlier on. But again, I appreciate the questions. I encourage you to all to join the Discord, JTAC, and CAS channel because there's great discussions that are happening there. And for me as an ex-professional, I don't think how a lot of civilians are using air-to-ground stuff in DCS world in particular. So any questions that you do have, it does make sense to me once we finally line up, and it just makes it easier for me to articulate through these whiteboard series videos what it is you exactly need so you can have a lot more fun demoing some guy's combined arms army on a Thursday night and just ruining that person's evening. Thanks again, guys, and as always, kill everything with everything simultaneously. Cheers.